And good morning. Welcome, St. Peter Claver. A little bit different today. Amen. Uh, we're on this sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and boy, the Lord is doing extraordinary things. We have a lot more demolition than expected, but we're grateful because we, ex we did expect it. We just didn't know when and how. So uh, we're here live um, on this live stream just with you and a few here with Deacons uh, and Brennan here. But we want to also let you know if you did come this morning and you're watching Mass in the parking lot, I will see you after Mass and give you communion outside. Uh, so we will work with those who happen to come this morning on the outside. But we're thankful for the love of God that wants to come from here to you. Uh, and so we're grateful for the Beatitudes and the Beatific vision that God wants to give to us all this day, and the Gospel especially. But let us first pause and ask God uh, for pardon and forgiveness. Or let's first pause and ask God to come into our hearts as we open ourselves to his love. We ask Mary to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. And welcome to St. Peter Claver, the little church of the big heart, obviously getting bigger with the construction out there. to be a follower of Christ. I want to be one of his disciples. I want to live in the newness of my life. Lord, have mercy. And with the angel. 
angels together, we give God the glory. We recite that now. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer on this sixth Sunday in ordinary time. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to be seated as we give listen to sacred scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed to the one who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. He is like a barren bush in the desert that enjoys no change of season, but stands in a lava waste, a salt and empty earth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is the Lord. He is like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the stream. It fears not the heat when it comes. Its leaves stay green. In the year of the drought, it shows no distress, but still bears fruit. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The responsorial song. Blessed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, and meditates on his law day and night. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. He is like a tree planted near the running water that yields its fruit. It is due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. Blessed are they who hope in the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, 
your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Let us rise up for the proclamation of the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. and a large number of the people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the coastal region of Tyre and Sidon. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult you and denounce your name as evil on the count of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that day. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophet in this way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. God is good. All the time. I said God is good. All the time. Who do you trust? I want to know who do you trust, church? I trust the Lord each and every day. Jeremiah 17, 5 tells us that we should trust in the Lord and not trust in human beings. Have you ever wondered why it is better to trust in the Lord than to trust in man? Man can only help you for a short period of time, but the Lord, he can help you all the time. I don't know about you, church, but I'd rather put my trust in the Lord than man. You see, God is the one that we turn to when we're in trouble. We don't have to answer any questions as to why we are in the situation we are in. God already knows about our situation before we ask for help. He is the one that you can always count on when you cannot count on anyone else. Here's the truth. The truth is you don't have to lose hope to trust in God. 
Hope is a choice based on the foundation of truth. Not, not data, not statistics, not percentages, not negativity, and not mainstream news. The truth where you can find real, lasting hope is in a person called Jesus. Jeremiah 17, 7 tells us that blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. Put your hope in the Lord and you will never lose hope. Without hope, you will not be able to manage depression anxiety, and being overwhelmed with the world problems. My advice to you is to get high on hope. Mercy and grace are what gives me hope. This hope comes from God above. You can get high on hope even when things are going wrong in your life. You can remain positive because you have firmly established hope, not based on what you would go through, but based on who goes through life with you. That person we all need is Jesus Christ. He is ultimate hope deal. He will keep you positive in the middle of the greatest negative season. We all have a negative season when things don't go our ways. No matter what we do, things seem to get worse. Stay positive, church, and trust in the Lord and he will get you through whatever you are going through. God wants you to trust in him and he will make a way for you. Our gospel today reminds us of the discourse of the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 7, which was delivered on a, on a level place. If you notice, the message was given to a multitude of people as well as his disciples. Jesus tested their sincerity by speaking the very bluntly to them. People had come from Judea and Jerusalem in the south of Tyre and Sidon in the Northwest. They were a diseased people and they knew if only they could touch Jesus, they could receive his healing power. Wherever Jesus is, there's always a crowd, amen? amen. Let me tell you, church, if you need to have that healing power for yourself, you first must trust in the Lord and he will heal you right now and right where you are in life. I don't care who you are, if you trust in the Lord, he will heal you. He will bind your wounds up just like nothing has ever happened to you. No matter what your condition, your condition might be in, he will fix it right now. The God that we serve is a good God. And he's in the fix-it business. He will fix whatever is broken in your life. He sits high and he looks low. He sees all we are doing, no matter where we are or what we are doing. You can't hide from God above. God that we serve knows everything. He knows everything about you and I. He knows you're going and he knows you're coming. So don't get it mixed up. If you think you're hiding from Jesus, you're only fooling yourself. He is the one that woke you up this morning and started you on your way. And for that reason, he has given us four blessings of the Beatitudes this morning in our gospel. He said, blessed are you who are poor for the kingdom of God is yours. He wants you to know that you don't have to be rich to get to the kingdom of God. Just trust in him and do his will and the kingdom of God is yours. 
Poverty is not a blessing, but more often a curse. But here Jesus is speaking about self-imposed poverty for himself. I don't know about you, church, but I want to get to the kingdom of God. And I'm willing to do whatever God tells me to do to get to that place. God said, blessed are you now hungry, for you will be satisfied. God wants us to know that hungry is a sign of life. We should hunger for the good relationship with God. The only way to have a good relationship with God is to do his will. We should not center everything around ourselves, but around others and God. Doing the will of God will prepare us for the kingdom of God. Only God knows what he has in store for us. When was the last time you did what God asked you to do? Are you working on your relationship with God by doing his will? Do you desire and hunger to get to know God better? These are some of the questions you need to ask yourself. How hungry are you to do God's will? He said, blessed are you who now are weeping, for you will laugh. Ever since God's perfect world was broken up, in the beginning of time, sadness has come into our lives. It seems that we are always faced with some type of sadness. There are times when we are happy, but there are times when we weep. We all have a season of grief every now and then, but with God's grace, we get through that season of grief. We, we weep for many reasons. Sometimes it is for human suffering. Sometimes it's for a loss of a loved one. Sometimes it's about a broken relationship and even persistent of our sins. God knows our situation. He knows our problem. And when we get into a situation and, and the problems are so heavy that we can't bear the load. That is when God steps in and he takes that load off your shoulder. He will take the load off your shoulder and carry it himself. That's who God is and that's what he does. But all of this is God's plan, getting us ready for the kingdom of God. God said, blessed are you when people hate you exclude you, insult you, and even denounce your name for his name's sake. Don't worry about what others may say or do because God will protect you no matter what is going on in your life. He won't let anything happen to you. All you have to do is to trust in him and everything will be all right. I know it's hard sometimes out there, church, to, to trust in the Lord. But let me tell you, he won't let you down. Proverbs, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your path. He's going to take care of you don't worry about anything else. You can't go wrong by trusting in the Lord. The Lord is the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. He is our God. All you have to do is trust in the Lord and everything will be all right. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We've trusted the Lord. Let us now renew the gift of our faith. Together we recite, I believe in one God, the Father Amen. Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us made him for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our, For our Savior is crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He has ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Church, we believe Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. With confidence in this, we place our needs before God. For Pope Francis, Bishop John, all priests, deacons, and all leaders in the church, we pray that they lead the church with courage, devotion to the gospel truths. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear God. our prayer. For the church, we pray that all the visible body of Christ on earth and by our faith we may draw others to join us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the meek and poor in spirit, we pray that they can show us the way to the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For all who worked in health care, we pray that they continue to show compassion to all those in their care and they receive respect and support from family members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. For all who suffer from mental or physical illness, especially David Carpenter, Father Dan Noel, Ernie Vassalon, Angie Gills, Paul Bumgarner, Teresa Phillips, Phillips, Martin, Lenny Thomas, Kathy Drives, Robert Morgan, Jean Cabernet, Ann Dahmer, Debbie Switzer, Suzanne Griffin, Leona Stark, Pauline Barber, Todd Newburn, Tom Withrow, Yvonne Weathers, Mary Mitchell, Kathy Cotero, Mary Coffey, Jerome Bennett, and Sylvester Bond. We pray that they be granted the gift of healing let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our us. prayers. For all who have died, especially Keith Mormon, Ann Bell, Curtis Pritchard, Landon Hayes, and our military, the elderly families, members, friends, innocent lives cut short from abortion, racist acts, suicide, auto accidents, gun violence, drug overdose, the coronavirus, and weather-related deaths. We pray that they will soon enter into the eternal home in the company of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. For everyone gathered out here, we pray that our personal desire to know and love God finds seeking more quiet time with him in prayer to pray and rest in his presence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. And again, for Sharon Greider and her family, Deacon Greider, um, during this time of preparation for uh, Ann Bell's celebration of life, for God's mercy and grace during this time of mourning, we pray to the Lord. 
Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And also for the Mormon family who traveled uh, to uh, the beach to be remembering of their dad and husband, Keith Mormon, um, for his light to continue to shine now and God's peace as well. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And for just, again, spirit of perseverance, spirit of persistence as uh, we endeavor to see our church built, that the sacrifice we were called to make, uh, we can handle them and also find creative ways to still be connected. Um, so we ask the Lord to give us the Holy Spirit during these times of adjustment and transition. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And also for our RCIA class, that they may know God's grace and continued formation as they prepare for the Easter sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. And for anyone out there who has some some weight on their hearts that the Lord may lift them up in a new way and give them healing and deliverance today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear yeah. our prayer. God, our Father, we acknowledge your presence in our lives and express our gratitude for everything you have done. Bless our families and our community with your ever-present love through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to be seated as our altars prepare and we'll have the Liturgy of the Eucharist. And again, those who are outside in the parking lot, we will also offer you communion shortly. I live a trust in the Lord. together as we're able to rise up as we pray over our gifts. Pray, my dear family, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our living and above his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, as in God your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when, when we Behold him who 
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to use it under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join us for the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Taste and see, taste and see, the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see, the Welcome to each of you who are worshiping with us today. This week, our CCD first and third week classes will meet on Wednesday via Zoom. There will be no weekday masses this week because of construction. And in the coming weeks, we talked about it a little bit last week about uh, safety on the property as we find out for sure about our construction schedule and what's going to happen from week to week. We ask that you uh, be vigilant if you're on the property. Uh, we will try to post those things midweek as to where we are. The first phase of our um, building construction is to digging up a basement for a mechanical room. So that entails a lot of construction around where we normally could get in and out of the doors. So just, we knew it was happening. So we ask for your patience as we get through the next week or so.
St. Peter Clayton would like to offer its condolences to two of our parishioners, the prisoners who lost loved ones this past week. Lisa Mormon and her families, whose husband Keith died this past week. Also, Deacon Annie and Sharon, and Sharon's mom, Ann Bell, whose funeral will be on Tuesday with visitation at 9 a.m. and Mass at 11 at St. Augustine Church in Lebanon, Kentucky. <clears throat> and again, from the Omeyatic Church, we offer our condolences to each of you. And I guess the last uh, thing I would say is, um, again, if you're on the property or near the property this week, uh, just be vigilant because we don't want anyone to get hurt on the property as we continue with construction. Thank you. And again, there are still office hours. So if you yeah. do need something at the office, then come through the 4th Street side entry. Uh, again, not on the Jefferson side entry. It's not good. No es bueno. Uh, so it's pretty dangerous out there with the rebar and, and all the concrete being destroyed. So if you need anything in the office, just come on the 4th Street side entry. Um, also, there might not be masses this week, but we're going to try something day by day. I would love to try a rosary out there outside of the perimeter and we can start praying for our building. I think that'd be sort of neat. Uh, so if you're interested in like to join me for a rosary on Tuesday, we'll just try it one day at a time and see how it goes. But Tuesday, meet me outside, weather permitting, uh, for a rosary on the perimeter outside of the construction and we'll just start praying for God's blessings and God's work to be done. I'm so excited, honestly. Uh, I don't know if there's an albatross that was on my back before, but I feel a lot lighter ever since three to four days ago. I don't know if Deacon felt that lightness uh, that we are experiencing, seeing the actual construction or now, right now, deconstruction uh, so that we can make way for construction. Um, I can say that uh, there are gonna be some really cool things coming up. Um, I'll be having a presentation on the liturgical arts environment and budget for our new art for the new church. So that's getting finished up this week, I'm excited to say. Uh, and then we'll make a Zoom kind of presentation also coming up is Deacon's planning uh, with a, a group of committee, a committee for a synod gathering for our parish, and most likely will be Zoom at this point. Uh, so that's coming up so that we can hear the body of Christ and share uh, from all people's perspectives how the church is doing, what is the church, how is the church being a, a blessing, what's positive about the church, what's the weaknesses, what areas can we grow. So your input is important. It will be all gathered and collected. Um, and be brought into those who are making bigger decisions than we do here local. But it will inspire us also to, the information gathered for us will inspire us to sort of modify or enhance and not our traditions or our dogmas or anything like that, but practices and pastoral applications. So just know that we are going to have our St. Peter Claymore's will be having our synodal meeting coming up in, I think, Lent. Um, so I think so. Is that right? I guess. Yeah, in March, so right right at the turn of Lent. Uh, there are going to be some activities in Lent um, that I'll be a part of, so I'll be in, make sure to invite you and in some revival activities uh, with Pax Christi and whatnot and adoration for vocations. And So there's some things that I'll be a part of that aren't at our church that I will make sure that you will have notice and invitation to be a part of, and, and even our choir will be a part of, so I'm, I'm letting them know uh, some opportunities to share some songs at, a, at the Pax Christi Revival. Um, or, uh, mission coming up in, in Lent. So again, um, there's one person here that came in and I was so blessed to, to see him, Brian Fox. I want to tell, let him there's all the heart to share. Have you trusted the Lord with your life? We are, we are not in the Mass, so you want to come up and just share a little bit. He, he can do it. He's a coach. He can go on the fly, but um, he's got a little witness for us as we conclude. So you go this way. About trusting in the Lord. Can I get some trust in the Lord? You can come over here. He also is a part of uh, the Conquest Boys Girls Club that I've been a part of, and so we've known each other for several years. That's right. That's right. Good friend. Uh, how to trust in the Lord, I think, um, I'll reference the Conquest program. I tell these kids all the, all the time. It's, it's a program for under for those kids here in, in Lexington. The amount of 
people that come in and, and help with these kids on a weekly basis or yearly basis, people like Father Norman, is so inspiring even when we have a lot of nonsense going on around us. I think it's really good, really, really good to give these kids some hope um, and see that adults that don't all look alike, you know, completely different, are just there to make these kids smile, give them hope for a much better future. I can tell you being from uh, Washington, D.C., uh, that's how I grew up, and I just think it's so important just to be kind and put your time, you know, it's not always money, put your time into the youth that surround us and, and hopefully can, can be our, our future. Okay. I appreciate the friendship with Father Norman for years, and, 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 and this church has just been awesome since I've been come, coming here. And, I think you got a bunch of great people in there. Amen. Thank you, brother. So I don't know about you, but just like Deacon said, I'm going to trust in the Lord this week. Can I get an amen? Uh, and I don't know if y'all are getting excited about the Super Bowl, but no matter what happens, trust in the Lord. Amen. Great to be with you. Uh, again, Tuesday Rosary, 5 p.m. on the perimeter. Let's uh, continue to pray, pray, pray for one another. Um, during this time and just mindful of the construction for Dean Builds and, and what they need for us to be safe and the occupancy and whatnot. Uh, we're just trying to be mindful again. So thank you for your spirit of perseverance and persistence. And again, like I said, we're just going to try to find creative ways to still be community during this time. Great to be with you. Thank you, Deacons. Thank you, Brennan. Thank you, Bill, for lecturing. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, good to be with you. Let us stand for a final blessing. Let's pray, pray, pray for one another. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. Amen. May he let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. 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 May he turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. Amen. 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 And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down now upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. This Mass is ended for forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Song number 712 in your Lead Me, Guide Me. I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready.